Um, I think you, if you don't, uh, if you, if 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 you you are missing out on a real pool of talent, if you don't um, ensure that autistic and neurodivergent people can access employment with you, and you are, um, you will not, um, you, you will harness and you will enable your own existing employees to thrive if you create an environment where they are comfortable to ask for adjustments they might need and uh, I mean a, a huge thing for me and, and it seems fairly obvious from the whole from the actual definition of neurodiversity people really want to avoid groupthink and you're only going to do that if you employ people who think differently um, and, in, and, and creating an atmosphere in which um, neurodivergent people can thrive um, is key to that and it's key for the rest of your staff as well and I would say that uh, almost always when we um, have internship schemes people have said these um, changes that we make actually they would benefit all employees it would benefit all our employees if we spoke to them about how best they communicate if they prefer written instructions if they prefer email instructions and, and actually I was at uh, the, the Lost Artist First Neurodiversity um, event last um, last week and one of the law firms there said, actually, for the last couple of years, what we've been doing, when we put a new new team together, the litigation department, we have a one-note document where everybody puts in their preferred working practices, not just the autistic members of the team, everybody. So we know how we all communicate best, how we can best be reached, when we can be reached, you know, whether we're working home, if we prefer email. And, and that, to me, was you know absolutely indicative of where an adjustment for that was made with, with autistic people in mind actually benefits the whole team. And you know, that's been enormously successful with them.